Okay, right, so right now what I'm making is some, um, uh, what am I making here? I'm making copper hexamine perchlorate. And this uses a lot of reagents, uh, well a couple of reagents anyhow that we have made already. Right here you see I've got, uh, this is roughly 25% ammonium hydroxide solution. I showed you how to make that in another video. Got a stirring in a water bath. Uh, water bath is not necessary for this. However, I need it because my hot plate is malfunctioning and the master switch turns the goddamn heat on full blast. And we don't want all of our uh, NH3 to evaporate off. As you can see, a lot of it is. It smells like cat piss in here right now. Uh, but I am uh, only at about not even 60C. I'm at like 57, 58C. Uh, you want to do this between about 50 and 60 C. Uh, and so uh, what we need for this, besides the ammonium hydroxide that we have there, uh, so I've got 100 grams of the 25% ammonium hydroxide in there. This is 30 grams here, pre-weighed out, ammonium perchlorate. You can buy this online very easily. Uh, a lot of pyrotechnic supplies places have this. Um, right here is pre-weighed out. This is 1.3 grams of copper oxide. Uh, if you're not sure how to obtain that, I did a video on how to make it electrolytically. Uh, you can also make it just by uh, decomposing some copper carbonate over heat if you have some on hand. So, uh, so now that we got this up to temperature, we're right about 60 C. I'm going to drop in our copper oxide. Now after this reacts for a little bit, it's going to turn bright blue because what we have essentially made right here then is copper tetraamine. Uh, I also did a video just on regular copper tetraamine. Uh, and the reason that this is going to be copper hexamine instead of copper tetraamine is because we are adding hexamine into it. Now, hexamine can be made by reacting some ammonium hydroxide with some uh, formaldehyde. Uh, and then uh, you let the formaldehyde evaporate off and you're left with hexamine. However, it is very simple to buy. Comes in little tablets that look like this. This is relatively pure hexamine. And it is sold as solid fuel for camping and doomsday prepping and whatnot. Um, so uh, this is what I'm using. We're going to want roughly 10 grams of this. I've got one of these crushed up here already. You want it to be a nice powder so it reacts nicely. Now uh, before all of my uh, ammonium here, or ammonia gas I guess I should say, uh, it completely boils off, I'm going to get a little piece of saran wrap or something and cover the top of this guy. Alright, so now I've got my uh, little cover on there. So basically what we're looking at now is just steam coming off my water bath. And I don't know if I made this mess here. And I was making the water bath or not. I hope I don't have a leak in my pan. I think I just spilled some water. We're, we're hoping not to just seem to have all this water with... Uh, all the electric stuff coming at us, so get rid of this real quick. Apologize for my setup here right now. I've got a lot of chemistry happening in the garage right now, so I can't use my normal best because I am in the middle of running a distillation. And, uh, well, I basically got bored waiting for this to go. This distillation has taken literally uh, about five hours now total so it's a long one but um so I figured I would make this in the meantime um it's not really something I have too much of on hand or anything uh so anyhow we got that all cleaned up now let's go ahead and let's add in our AP You want to use nice strong stirring for this. Mm. 
All right, AP is in. Let's close this back up. To keep our ammonia from subliming off. Crank the stirring up a little bit. And now after adding all that AP and everything, I don't know if you can see it, I'm using my horrible thermometer. Oh yeah, you can't see it. I'm using my horrible thermometer, but we are roughly at, uh, uh, you still can't even see it. Uh, we're at about 50 C, so that's where we want to be. Between 50 and 60 C, you want to run this. So now what we do is we wait for our AP and our copper oxide to fully react together and with the uh, ammonia that we have in there and uh, then we can add in our hexamine and we're going to want 10 grams of hexamine one of these tablets that I have is about 7 grams so we're going to need a little bit more than one tablet about one and a third so uh, I've only got one crushed up right now so I've got about 7 grams I'm going to go ahead and crush the other one up and uh, probably by that time when I'm done doing that our uh, solution will be ready for the addition of the hexamine. Alright, so, got our hexamine all ready to go. Right here, we got 10 grams of hexamine. If you can read my chicken scratch there. Got it all crushed up. Uh, so this has been reacting the whole time. And it is a very, very dark blue color right now. Almost a black and that's to be expected. All right, so we're going to add in our hexamine. Again, keep the stirring strong for this. There goes our hexamine. Okay, that's in. Boy, God, I hate ammonia. It smells so bad. All right, there we go. So, we're going to let our hexamine react with the ammonium perchlorate. The uh, copper oxide should be mostly reacted already. Um, so, basically what's happening, uh, not going into too much detail, but so your copper oxide is reacting with the ammonium hydroxide and that's turning the copper oxide into copper tetraamine. And so then basically you are taking and you are adding a hexamine uh, and a perchlorate to it. So you've got two separate ions that you are tacking on to the tetraamine molecule. Uh, and I believe that that is fundamentally what is happening here. Uh, there's not really much else to say about it. We just need to let this react for a while, and uh, even though we don't have a condenser on there, it is more or less refluxing in the container with the cover on it, uh, and that's good. That's what we want. Um, we have climbed to about 70C, and that's all right. As long as we don't get it so hot that our ammonia starts to completely go away, because uh, then we will lose the tetraamine. Um, if you do happen to do this and you get a little bit too hot and you start to lose volume of ammonia, you can always add some more ammonium hydroxide solution. Not that huge of a deal. Uh, but, so let's let this react and then it's time to filter it. Okay, so this has been reacting and we're starting to get up to about 80 C because of my hot plate. So I'm going to take it here, uh, total time this has been reacting has been uh, 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to set it off to the side, let it cool to room temperature and then I'm going to chuck it in the fridge for a while. Uh, if you don't have a fridge for laboratory use, you can use an ice bath but you want to let it cool to room temp first so that you don't break your beaker when you immerse it in the water. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to let this cool down, and uh, we're going to want to recrystallize this. So, letting it cool really slowly at this point is not uh, a big issue. What we want to do is just get it cooled down and get it in the fridge so we can crystallize everything out of it. 
and then we will cool it as slowly as possible to get the nicest crystals. So, uh, once this cools down, I'll be back. Alright, I just wanted to give you guys an update what's going on here. It's been about 20 minutes. Got my copper hexamine perchlorate here in the fridge. Very dark blue color. Can't really see through it at all. That's what we want. So we're going to leave this in here until this gets down to about 0 C or 10 below. And then we'll pull it out. Everything should be crystallized out by then. So we'll stick this back in here right there next to the beer. And let's close her up. And we'll say goodbye to that for a little bit. I just want to give you guys a little update here. Uh, you can sort of see in the bottom there. Let's put some of this frost off of it. Condensation. Uh, let me bring this over into a light. Maybe you'll be able to see it better. There you go. You can see some of it there in the corner. So, hold this up against the light. Ah, uh, shit. It's not doing anything. Well, you see. Okay, there we go. Now with the light on it there, you can start to see the crystallization coming. We're down to about uh, 10 C, I want to say. And so we're going to let this cool for uh, maybe another hour. And uh, then we're going to extract our crystals out of this. Alright, so it's been uh, about two hours and 20 minutes. We're gonna get our CHP out of the fridge. Bring this guy over here. And we got a lot, you can see there's a lot of crystallization in the bottom there. All that blue area that you see, that light blue. Yeah, kind of hard to see, but that is all the crystals. You'll see them here momentarily as we go through filter this. I've already got my uh, filter apparatus set up here. Gotta wet the paper. If you do not have vacuum filtration, of course, gravity filtration is always an option here. Let's see, let's get our tube hooked up.
pretty nice. However, you can see there's some white flecks in it. So what we have to do is we need to dry this out and uh, then we will recrystallize it. So what we have here is, uh, I've just got a little skillet. Uh, technically it is a wok. However, the uh, main thing here is that we have a non-stick surface. Doesn't matter what you're using. Now you don't want the surface temp to be above 80 C. I am right now at, uh, you can see I am at 58 C, 60 C roughly, depending on where you shoot it. So I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Probably too much there. You can see we still have a lot of water in this. So I'm going to continue to dry this for the next 10 minutes or so and then we will recrystallize it. So you can see here, we've been drying this for about 10 minutes or so. And uh, it has lost a lot of its blue color, which is normal when you dry this. Uh, I'm going to turn the heat off. Uh, uh, never mind, I'll leave it on. We're going to need to heat it again. So uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to get this out of the pan and we want to recrystallize it. And we're going to use the 25% or better ammonium hydroxide to do this. Um, now, a five. Side note here. This right here is what we filtered off. And you want to save that because you can stick that back in the fridge for a day or so. And you can crystallize out uh, some more product if you really want to. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the recrystallization supernate um, into this as well. Uh, once I get done recrystallizing. And uh, I'll try to pull some more product out of it. But uh, for the purposes of this video though. I'm not going to worry about it. You, you can see all of the mechanical loss there in the filter too. You can actually dry the filter out uh, and take a toothbrush or something to it. And you can get the rest of the stuff out of there. Um, so now we're going to recrystallize it. Pour a jug of Napa full synthetic motor oil and a platinum filter. Okay, just so here we are. We'll turn the stirring on. That's a great on. deal for a great oil, which is another reason why this is the most wonderful time of the year. There we go. That's Napa full synthetic oil and a platinum filter for twenty three ninety eight. So, All and there we have roughly. That's Napa know how. You can see about 50 milliliters of our 25 percent. Uh, this is closer to 28 year, actually percent uh, ammonium hydroxide solution that we made we and we're heating it up and we would again uh, about and after any meal it has uh, to be 60 70 C somewhere in there but you'll also notice that no matter how or when they're drinking coffee the brand more Italians choose than any other is Lavazza. click to find out why. and once we get that target Lavazza. temp then we will it's add in our in CHP Okay, so I have our copper hex name for chlorate here, and uh, we're not at the target temp yet, but I'm going to go ahead and add this in, because it will get up to that temp very quickly. All right, so now we've got our CHP in solution. Now you can see it is a very, very brilliant blue color. And 
Okay, so uh, we're going to let this heat up to about 70 C or so, and then we are going to chuck it back in the fridge uh, after we let it cool down as slow as possible in the ambient temperature. So what I did was I, uh, so we heated this up to about 70 C, and this is just saran wrap on the top here. And what I did was I insulated it with foil all the way around so that it would cool as slowly as possible. So what we are trying to do here is get the biggest, nicest looking crystals that we can out of this. Um, hence the insulation so that it cools as slow as possible. And just touching this right now, it still feels like it's at least between 40 and 50 C. Uh, so we're going to let this cool down like this until we feel no more heat. And then we're going to let it cool a little bit more. And then we're going to stick it back in the fridge. And then we have our final product. So here's the uh, copper hexamine perchlorate. After I let it just crash out, I just left it in the fridge for a couple days. You can see it all there. Looks pretty nice. Nice and blue after it recrystallized. I've got the other solution back here. Just stuck it back there to see if anything would come out of it. I doubt it will. But there's not too much in there. It's not that horrifically blue. So I'm going to put this on the pump for a little bit. And... See if I can get this dry, and I'll probably heat it up slightly for a few minutes, and uh, we'll give it away. See how much we got.